been an encouraging weekend thus far, and um, I'm, I'm very thankful for the topic that was chosen. I remember sitting around in Pat's living room when it was being discussed, and he gave a couple of options, and someone said, oh, I like this option, and Pat said, um, I think we're going with, with, with High Priest, and um, I, I'm glad that he did, because growing up, it's, it's a topic that I neglected. Um, most of the churches and the assemblies where I attended n- neglected it as well. It just wasn't talked about. So I'm thankful for the encouragement to help me refocus and see the importance of Christ our High Priest. Amen. 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 My topic is He Offered Up Himself. Uh, two scriptures assigned were Hebrews 7.27 and Hebrews 9.26. Hebrews 7.27, who does not need daily like those high priests to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people, because this he did once for all when he offered up himself. In Hebrews 9.26, otherwise he would have needed to suffer often since the foundation of the world, but now once at the consummation of the ages, he has manifested. He has been manifested to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Amen. Sin is a Amen. is a serious issue. Mm-hmm. Amen. Right. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death. Uh-huh. Isaiah fifty nine. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. It's it's not just a a simple communication problem in his hearing. We, we are separate. Our sins have separated us from Him. Amen. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2 even paints a, a more stark picture. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. Children of wrath. And then further in in chapter 2, verse 12, remember that you were formerly at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. That's that's where we were. Amen. That's where Amen. every man is Amen. at one point. Amen. The sacrifices offered by the Old Testament priests couldn't alleviate this problem. We're gonna we're gonna be three for three today in going to Hebrews chapter ten. Hebrews chapter ten Verse 1, for the law, since it it has only a shadow of the good things to come and not the very form of things, can never by the same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make perfect those who draw near. Otherwise, they would not have ceased to be offered because the worshipers, having once been cleansed, would no longer have consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a reminder of sins year by year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. These sacrifices that the priests offered were never intended to take away our sin. They were intended to lead us and help us comprehend the substance which cast that shadow. Jesus. They couldn't cleanse the conscience. But consider Jesus. 
the apostle and high priest of our confession. He offered up himself. He didn't offer bulls or goats. He offered up himself. The sacrifice of himself. He is the perfect sacrifice. He is the sacrifice that can make perfect those who draw near. He is the sacrifice that can cleanse the conscience. He is the sacrifice that can take away sins. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. God's eternal purpose involved in offering that would indeed put away sin. Amen. Yes. John 129. The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Amen. 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 1 John 3, 5. You know that he appeared in Amen. order to take away sins. Amen. Amen. And in him there is no sin. Amen. Amen. And again, it's been mentioned uh, this morning. Daniel chapter 7, verse 24. Seventy weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up a vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. Other Old Testament writings speak of the fulfillment, the forgiveness fulfilled in Christ. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Amen. Though they are red like crimson, they will be like wool. Amen. Psalm 103, 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. In Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. Amen. And for what purpose? 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also died for our sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having put to death in the flesh, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. He completely dealt with the issue of sin so that he might bring us to God. Amen. 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 How could the sacrifice of Jesus accomplish what the blood of bulls and goats could not? Jesus was perfect. He was complete. He was the Lamb without blemish. He was the only begotten Son of God. And He chose to do so. Amen. I want to deal with that issue of choice. See, the, the will of the bull or the goat or the turtle dove or whatever the sacrifice was not involved. It was, it was never even considered. There was no choice regarding what was done to them. There's no choice for themselves in a moral sense. No bull or goat could choose good or refuse evil. Even when we think of examples listed in Scripture of Abraham offering up Isaac. Isaac, in a sense, was a willing participant. He, he went along with his father and he carried the, the wood yeah, right. and the fire and but even as they were going, I think a little bit of a doubt seemed to creep, creep in. Isaac said, well, I see the fire, and here's the wood, but where's, where's the lamb? His willingness was only up to, to a point. And as they reached the top of the mountain, you know, 
I read the account and Isaac, he didn't lay himself down on the altar. As a matter of fact, Scripture, I think in verse 9 says, in Genesis 22, 9, that he was bound first. And Abraham placed him on the altar. And we read the account of this, the record of this as great faith in Hebrews chapter 11. It's not Isaac's faith for his willingness to lay down his life. It's Abraham's faith. But Jesus, continuing in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, Therefore, when he comes into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, To do your will, O God. And after saying above, Sacrifices and offerings and whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you have not desired, nor have you taken pleasure in them which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first in order to establish the second. Amen. You know, he appears, that the indication I, I get from reading this is that at some point Jesus quoted this scripture and then said, it's, it's talking about me, and behold, I have come to do your will. It, it, it reminds me of Luke chapter 4, when Jesus goes into the synagogue, and he picks up the book of the scroll and starts reading and says, this prophecy, I am he who just prophesied. And all eyes were on him, and God's eyes were on Jesus, and Jesus was willing. Amen to be the sacrifice, to offer himself. He made the choice to come do God's will. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, Amen. in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. He knew God's eternal purpose was to be carried out in him, and he was willing. And it started, it started in heaven. Philippians chapter 2. Both brothers may have touched on this last night. Philippians chapter 2, starting with verse 4. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. He made the choice yes. to look out for our interest. Mm -hmm. He emptied himself <coughs> and took on flesh. He made the choice to continue resolutely in God's will once he took on flesh. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verses 31 through 34. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples were saying to one another, No one brought him anything to eat, did he? But Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me Amen. and to accomplish his work. Amen. Amen. Jesus chose to sustain himself by doing the will of God. Amen. John chapter 8. Verse 29. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. Amen. Jesus chose 
by His own will to always do the things that were pleasing to God. And then in John chapter 10, verse 17 and 18, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. It was the Father's command, but it involved Jesus' will and Amen. His initiative Amen. to carry it out. And He chose to do that. He chose to resist the temptation of the devil after 40 days of fasting. He chose to continue to resist. So at the end of his days, when it was finished, it could be noted of him that he was without sin. Amen. He chose to pray continually and intently, and offering up prayers, crying, and loud groans. He was known for his piety. He chose to forgive while in the midst of his suffering. He chose to comfort others in the midst of his suffering. He chose good and refused evil. Amen. He chose to humble himself even to the point of death. He chose to love us and gave himself up for us, a pleasing aroma to God. He offered up himself. He ascended into the true holy place, into heaven itself, with his blood and intercedes for us now. Because of this, because he offered up himself, it's reasonable of him to ask us, urge us, to offer our bodies as living and holy sacrifices acceptable to God. He's only asking us to do something he was willing and demonstrated. Amen. But more than that, as high priest, he reigns, or he's interceding there on our behalf to give us the grace in order to carry it out. Amen. It was reasonable for him to ask us to lay aside every sin and encumbrance and run the race set before us because he resisted every temptation and laid aside encumbrances and he ran his race. <coughs> It's reasonable for him to ask us to offer spiritual sacrifices. To press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. Because he set his gaze resolutely toward Jerusalem. And he finished his work. And he equips us to do the same. He's there interceding for us. It's reasonable for him to ask us with all prayer and petition... Pray at all times in the Spirit because He offered up prayers. It's reasonable for Him to ask us to be holy because He is holy. Because He was holy. It's reasonable for Him to ask us to deny ourselves, to take up our cross and follow Him because He did it first. It's reasonable that he would ask us to lay down our lives for the brethren because he laid down his life for us. He Amen. offered himself up. Amen. As high priest, he is able to supply us the grace to walk in a manner worthy of him and please him in all respects. Amen. Amen. Consider Jesus our high priest. He offered up himself. Amen. 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 Any comments? I like the, uh, the way Brother Mike there presented the truth of this matter of him laying down his, his life and offering up himself was, a, was according to the will of God. That, 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 that he, he was doing things that pertain to God. Mm -hmm. that, was his, that was his first and foremost uh, desire mm -hmm. of his heart. Was to, was to accomplish the will of God. Yeah, amen. In, in that text that we quote from, from the Psalms about it, come to do thy will, O God, and the psalmist, he says, I delight to do thy will, mm -hmm. O God. This is, mm -hmm. 
this was a, a, a revelation of the, of the very, very heart <coughs> of Jesus, that this was, if you will, the, 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 the compelling part of, of Jesus to accomplish this. He delights. He delights to be yeah. at his will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, loves, he loves the Father. Yeah. 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 That's what the scripture says. He loveth the Father. Mm -hmm. and, and, he, and he desires to do all things that are pleasing unto him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he's, he's doing these things that you, as are pertaining to God. Mm -hmm. That's, that's first and foremost. We, we partake of the benefits because they pertain to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, he, he, he came down, he came to earth, he came to this world, but not to do, not to do worldly things, not to, not to engage himself in earthly matters or in matters of men. You know, he came here, but... He didn't even come to do his own will. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Father's will. He, he prayed, not my will, but thine be done. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a willingness mm -hmm. with which he offered himself and died. See, the, the sheep and the lambs and the bulls, they didn't have a choice. They didn't have willingness. Mm -hmm. They were taken and offered. But not so our Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. He offered himself. Very good. I appreciate the way you said that um, the sacrifices under the law they were for us to help us comprehend the right. substance that's behind the shadow yes, mm -hmm. yes. that, or maybe yeah. in front of the shadow <laughs> yeah. we can see the shadow and look forward and see the substance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very helpful to us Amen Brother Mike said as high priest he is able to Apply us the grace um, to enable us to walk acceptably before, before God. It's a good, uh, you know, the, uh, I had, for, if, if you don't see Jesus as being the high priest, you, uh, well, I guess starting out in the kingdom of God, you know, you, uh, you, you know that uh, forgiveness is administered and and you know that uh, benefits are brought to you, but but see, he's the one. He's the one that's actually administering that. Amen. He's personally administering Amen. that Jesus. You know, when you have uh, this matter of the of the forgiveness of sins experientially, I don't mean uh, I don't mean the foundational aspect. I'm talking about on a day by day basis the experiential forgiveness of sin when you confess your sins unto God and. Well, this is personally administered. This cleansing, the <coughs> cleansing from sin, is personally administered by mm -hmm. by the high priest, mm -hmm. by Jesus, our our great high priest. Amen. I appreciated the uh, the very uh, ordered way that Brother Mike uh, presented his uh, his his message, and uh, the, I, you, I could tell the. Uh, the devotedness that he, he put to putting this uh, putting this together, these thoughts together, and, and it was uh, this is well pleasing in the sight of God. It was Amen. very, it was a very, it was all, it was very good. Amen. I really like the. Uh, that you pointed out that Jesus sustained himself by doing the will of God. Mm -hmm. This was a yeah. he Amen. sought out to do this to sustain himself. Mm -hmm. That's our desire as well. Yeah. In his willingness, he he's gone before us. We right. follow in his step, and he makes us willing. All the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Shall be willing. Yeah. Yeah. Shall be willing. I guess you can say that as, as we see men and women of those who are in Christ Jesus and willing that we can we can we can affirm that Jesus is ruling and reigning That's in right. place. He made us willing to the day of his power. There's an Amen. effectual working of, of the high priest there being demonstrated in the earth and mm -hmm. in, in men and women. Yeah. It's a testimony of his willing you know the, yeah. the reason that they're willing is because of him.
guy who works for Adult Swim Books or whatever. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Yep. Amen. Amen. It's a, I think it's you know it's appropriate for us to we want to recognize that we want you know right, I, right. I want to do a better job of declaring that too you know you, I can see it, you can confirm the disciples this way right. you kind of, you can see that God is a, is in you right. of a truth you know this is I can see that God's working in you making you willing and and doing is right. of His good pleasure that's well, that's a good word to say to the brethren examine right. yourself to see if you be in the faith that's right. mm-hmm. I know some will, will, will have, have rejected that. How dare you say that to me? But, you know, that's, I, I, I love to hear that exhortation. Examine mm-hmm. yourself. Yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. It is God that is working you once again. Do his good pleasure. You want to know that God is working mm-hmm. you. Yeah, amen. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And we must do this when we come before him. <coughs> mm-hmm. We must hold fast to what he's done within us. Mm-hmm. He who, who has begun this good work in you, he's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's right. Amen. 